Yes, sir. Bobski, baby. <laughs> Let's get it, man. What it do, man? It's your boy, Just Half, and I'm back over here again with another reaction for you. All right, so look, we about to get into a Jordan Peterson on comedian Bill Burr. Now, y'all know Bill Burr, my guy. You know what I'm saying? And Jordan Peterson, he be speaking some of that real talk, too. So, I'm kind of curious and interested on what this is going to be all about. You feel me? So, I'm going to let it play all the way through. I know y'all, somebody I got on me, I ain't stopping in, in between. In. So, I'm going to let it play all the way through. Then I may give you my uh, input on it at the end of the video. All right? Follow me everything in links. Uh, follow me in everything down in the description below. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Come and join the family. We over here, big chilling. Y'all already know what it is. Let's get it. <laughs> like they have any idea what it's like to be tempted at that level, right? Like they have groupies as they waddle out to their mercury tracer, parked on the other side of a dumpster. Really, you're beating them off? How can I judge these guys? I can barely handle the temptations of Facebook. I'm gonna judge Tiger Woods. I golf, I don't walk off the 18th hole and there's a busload of Scandinavian women waiting to fuck my brains out. Sorry ladies, gotta go home to the wife, right? You know, Louis C.K. a while back talked about Tiger Woods, which, and I really liked it because people were complaining about Tiger Woods um, and his affairs. Yeah. And also about our, Arnold Schwarzenegger and his affairs. And, um, and one of the things that Louis C.K. pointed out quite in a very comical manner was that, well, many men aren't having the affairs of Tiger Woods. But that's not because they're good men. It's because they don't have, I think he said, a busload of Swedish, Swedish bikini models waiting for them at the final hole. So the idea would be that you should conduct yourself so that you are attractive to many women, maybe that you have your pick of them, but then you should pick one. And that's a sacrifice. Obviously, that's a sacrifice of a sort. It's, it's a strange sacrifice because, you know, I, I talked to someone, a, co a comedian recently, who told me of one of his experiences in Las Vegas. So he went to Las Vegas with a sports superstar. And they went to a party and what literally happened at the party was one woman brought forward a small group of other women, all very attractive, and basically told the, the sports legend that he could just pick one of them and she would go home with him, right? And so that had all been arranged beforehand, and he said that he's been in many situations where something like that has happened. And I thought, well, you know, that sort of is appealing to the Hugh Hefner playboy 14-year-old fantasy that sort of gripped our culture from the 1960s onward, but imagine that you sleep... I've been watching that little thing, too, about the Playboy Mansion thing, uh, Secrets of Playboy, or something like that it's called. I caught a few episodes on that. That shit pretty crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Leave a thumbs up or something like that in the comment section if y'all been watching that, too. ...sort of gripped our culture from the 1960s onward, but imagine that you sleep casually with 100 women in in, in a six-month period, or a three-month period, for that matter, or a three-week period. I don't care. Pick your time frame. And you say, well, what, what, and you're, you're, you're ecstatic with yourself because you've been validated by this opportunity. And, and I'm not making light of that. It's not nothing to be attracted to women like that. It's really something to be attracted to women like that. But it isn't obvious to me that your choice to conduct yourself in that manner enriches your life and the life of other people more in any way than picking one person and actually having a relationship with them. It's only true that that promiscuous pathway, let's say, is better if you can actually divorce sexuality from all the other elements of life. You say, well, it's about variety and it's about impulsive pleasure. Well, Maybe it could be even slightly deeper than merely impulsive pleasure. It could be shared impulsive pleasure. But I don't think you can do that because sexuality isn't divorceable from family and from 
morality and from all the other elements of your life. And if you're mature, you know that. And so you make a decision. You make a decision not to capitalize on your opportunity, not to misuse your opportunities. And you know, a huge part of the Me Too phenomena, a huge part of this battle that's being played out in our culture is a consequence of the failure of men to recognize that. Now, it's not only the failure of men. Let me be absolutely clear about that. Because, for example, with the um, example of the sports superstar, the women who are lining up in front of him, parading themselves and offering themselves, are deeply complicit in, in this pathological game. And so it's pretty clear anthropologically as well that, you know, sexual choice tends towards a Pareto distribution, especially for men. So most men have very little selection at their disposal. disposal. And a small number of men have excess opportunities. The question is, what should that small number of men do? And you might say, capitalize on it then, to hell with the consequences. And like, it's a powerful argument, but I do believe it's wrong. It destabilizes the society. And so, and I also don't think it does your soul any good because the problem with treating other people as casual sexual partners, let's say, is that you also treat yourself that way simultaneously. And I don't think that that does you any good because you're not, unless that's what you want to be. If you want to be a casual partner, it's like, well, that's, I wouldn't say that's a particularly noble ambition. You should be able to do better than. A very strange day is coming to America. In short, a massive and surprising new transition could suit than that. All my heroes are going down. Arnold Schwarzenegger, another great man. Another great man. Taken down by that gold digging whore of a man he's got. And I'm not, I'm not saying he's not a piece of shit for doing what he did. It was a piece of shit move. But how come only he got chastised? What about the maid? Why was she called the maid the, that entire story? She was never called a whore, ever. It just boggled my mind. She knew his wife, first name basis, played with their kids, fucked her husband in their own goddamn bed. That's right down the checklist. First ballot Hall of Fame whore, right there. Never. Why do you think she hooked up with him? Because of that 1987 flat top he's still rocking? A giant space between his teeth, I could put this mic cord through? Or do you think maybe it's all that kindergarten cop money laying around the goddamn bedroom? Oh, it's awful. It's a horrific thing to see as a guy, watching guys go through that shit, you know? And then there's no, there's no sort of examination of it. They just go, ah, he's an idiot. Hey, stupid. That guy's stupid. If that guy's stupid, what the fuck am I, right? <laughs> Does it even make sense? Why would you do that? Why would you accomplish all that and then fuck it up, hooking up with one of the ugliest human beings I've ever seen in my life? I'm not saying I'm a prize. I'm just saying, you know? There's got to be something beyond that, right? You know what I think it is? I think it comes down to the way he talks. You know? That dude should be unloading trucks in Transylvania. That should be, that should have been the height of his success. But because he's a great man, he had the balls to move to America. Became famous for lifting weights. I lift weights, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> he lifts weights, ah, 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 become super famous. Did he rest on his laurels? No, next challenge. I'm gonna become an actor despite the fact that nobody can really understand me. <laughs> Against all odds, he starts making movies. Get down, there's a bomb. <laughs> Get out of there. <laughs> Becomes one of the biggest oh. blockbuster stars of all time. Facts. What are you gonna do next, Arnie? I think I'm Maddie Kennedy. There's no fucking way you can do that. Bam, he does it. <laughs> Cherry on top, I'm running for governor of a state I can't even pronounce and he wins the election. Why wouldn't this guy think he couldn't bang his maid in his own bed and get away with it? This dude has been in the zone for over four decades. <laughs> four decades, nothing but neck. Oh, Bang a maid in my own bed? Dude, that's a layup. Are you serious? That's easy. I had a hit movie with a layup. midget. I don't even need a condom. <laughs> Right? 
And then what happens? The smoke clears. Then all these trolls come out of the woodwork and start judging this great man. All these fatties, these fucking old guys who never got any with their jowls coming on TV. Absolutely reprehensible behavior. What kind of a public servant? His, his, his legacy is shrouded. <laughs> like they have any idea what it's like to be tempted at that level, right? Like they have groupies as they waddle out to their mercury tracer parked on the other side of a dumpster. Really? You're beating them off? This guy, he's not a great man anymore? Terminator doesn't count? Is that what the fuck you're telling me? Because he fucked Alice? Really? He's still not a great man because he did that. Then that's, the whole thing's over? Anybody here think they could move to Austria, learn the language, become famous for working out, then be a movie star, then marry into their royalty and hold public office? How many lifetimes would you need? I'm on my third attempt at Rosetta Stone Spanish. I, how can I judge these guys? I can barely handle the temptations of Facebook. I'm gonna judge Tiger Woods. I golf, I don't walk off the 18th hole and there's a busload of Scandinavian women waiting to fuck my brains out. Sorry ladies, <laughs> gotta go home to the wife, right? <laughs> oh shit, man, Bill Burr, that's my guy right there, man. Hey, y'all need some Bill Burr reactions, man, that I can react to, man. I love Bill Burr, dog. He's so just raw with it. You know what I mean? I love that. I love that, man. I want to try to stop cussing so much, too, y'all. So, you know, I know y'all be tripping sometimes. <laughs> and all this whole type of stuff. So, you know. But anyway, I'm not perfect. So, if I cuss, then excuse me. You feel me? But anyway, Jordan Peterson, man, versus Bill Burr. Hope y'all enjoyed that one. Leave your comments down below. Suggestions. It's the coolest dude with the beard, baby. Just have. And I'm gone. Peace.